What's your earliest memory of working on a car then? Is it that Corvair? Yeah, so I, I no, way before that. One of my dad's vehicles was a Volkswagen bus with a Corvair drivetrain in it. So he was always working on that and, and keeping it running. So if he was working on it, I was there just absolutely glued. And so I remember one time he took a couple starters apart to make one good starter and mm -hmm. put it back together. And so there's these parts of starters and I just sit out there. I, I, man, six years old maybe. And I'm not strong enough to stuff the spring back in the solenoid, mm -hmm. but I got the whole thing. It's just a puzzle for me. And I'd put it together and then realize I left parts out. I could do that all day long. So that, so that's my memories is just working on that stuff. Best way to learn is tear something apart or try to put it back and it's figured out. That's pretty good. Yeah. If you want to have fun, drink every time we say Corvair. <laughs> how many, yeah, how many, At your risk. how many more questions you have that Corvair's the answer? At your I'm own curious. risk. <laughs>
and this year we call it the off-road games because we want to button our, buttonhole ourselves into just one kind of event. Sure. But yeah, we a, bu- a bunch of friends were building wreckers or had them, and we just put a little competition together and had 6,500 6, people show up to watch it. That's pretty wild. So anybody that hasn't seen this, what is what was the record games now the off road games? What is this? Oh, oh man, in a, I could talk about this for a while, but in a nutshell, I wanted ultimately I wanted to have fun with my friends, kind of have an exhibition of like what do we do and what are we capable of, and then invite our audiences to come out and kind of mingle with us so that they could meet the the people they watch on YouTube and watch them do the thing that they right. are known for and do. And um, yeah, and just kind of get everybody together and have a good time, and that's what happened. So this year we're doing it again, and um, we're expecting more people. That's pretty awesome. We had chatted a little bit uh, on the uh, cellular devices, and you had you sent in an invitation to come out. I wish I could make it. Unfortunately, I can't. It sounds like a blast. Um, but I am booked doing uh, road ready rescues that same that same week. Yeah, it happens. Yeah. But keep me in mind for it. This sounds like a lot of fun, especially if there's people that have to volunteer to get intentionally stuck. I mean, I'll, I'll be <laughs> that guy. Have you ever done any rock crawling? Um, very amateur uh, kind of stuff in the Black Hills of South Dakota. I okay. used to do. There's, there's some stuff there. Yeah, we built some, you know, two and a half tons, 44s, dovetailed some things. I used to do some off roadish stuff, but huh? kind of got burnt out on it. Yeah, well, we need to get you in something. Yeah, it'd be fun. Have you just show up and drive up something you wouldn't want to drive up? (laughs) Great. Well, as long as it's got brakes and a battery, then I'm probably in. All right. All right, cool. So what other kind of vehicles you got then? Do you have any, um, obviously you've got all your recovery vehicles, but do you have any other hot rods or hobbies with cars, old trucks? Yeah, I'm a Corvair guy. So I've I've been into those since as early as I could remember. I've owned over a hundred of them. Um, I'm currently I own a couple dozen. Wow! And uh, why? They're just a very unique vehicle. They're, um, they're the engineering and and design and they're fun to drive. They're they're, in my opinion, the most relevant car from the '60s today. For just getting in and driving they'll do freeway speeds they stop their stopping distances on par with a modern car their their handling and and all and even fuel mileage so it's just kind of a car ahead of its time and it's very weird and quirky made by chevrolet air cooled engine in the back yep. so there's just lots of things that keep me interested about them i know that i know that uh, technology's come a long way since then and i'm not going to say that they're you know, the best car ever made, but for me, they're the one that's kept my attention for hmm. my whole life. I've had a handful. I only have one right now. And I bought it out of Canada. And the reason I bought it in Canada was it was painted the American flag, if that makes any sense. Okay. <laughs> I think it's a 64. I don't know what tell the difference, I guess. But yeah, um, it runs, no brakes. I just don't fit in them very good. Oh uh, yeah, you got so, you'd have to get the seat extent extension yeah, there to do. I was gonna ask you, you gotta do something with the seat or yeah. press the roof up or something like that. So you're a Corvair guy, that explains the Corvair off road recovery machine. Yeah, yeah. I had that thing laying around and decided to to build it. I've been I've been into like mechanics my whole life. Like I'd slough school to read like Car and Driver or Hot Rod magazine or whatever. Like you'd find if I'm slough in school you're going to find me in the back of the library with a bunch of car magazines. So. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. I'm the same way when people ask, what's your favorite book? It's like, usually <laughs> like a Haynes. Or, right, right. <laughs> you uh, know, just something. Read, read an owner's manual or not a repair manual. Right. And learn all this stuff. But how did you learn all this stuff? You're like, well, the information is there. You just got to read it. Yeah. And that's what, and really, that's what got me interested in reading. They're like, here's Nancy Drew. And I'm like, what? what? <laughs> and then I'm like, wait, these magazines are full of car information and, that would that pushed me into wanting to read. That's cool. So have you ever had? Obviously, you're sounds like you're doing a couple of recoveries a week, maybe more that we don't see. But have you ever had one that you were just could not get it unstuck, couldn't get them out? Some not necessarily failed, but just the attempt didn't go well. We, I've got a pretty deep uh, friend base that can help with this kind of stuff. 
I'm close to Paul from Fab Rats. Um, Rory, he's in Moab. He's like five hours away, but that's still close enough on a big job to get some help. Okay. So we usually look at the job and then decide like, it, do we can we handle this in house? I've even had uh, Heavy D come help on a job that was just outside of our scope. Yeah, it seems like he when he started his channel, he really got into the recovery stuff there. Yeah, right yeah. There's was, there's was some people paying attention to what we were doing. Yeah, but yeah, we, and we work we work good with all those guys. Um, we work in different areas. We all have different techniques and like different stuff we run into. But we can pull together and get something done, and that's that's kind of cool. I that's think. very cool. Do you have a a favorite moment or recovery that you've done, where you know at the end of the day or you're like, man, that was really fun, or that was epic, yeah. or... There's, there's a kind of job that um, that I look for, and they don't come up very often, and that's where they're crazy technical, but we're not going to be there, like, into the night. Mm. And so um, there's one that I was thinking about that, that where this Jeep, I don't know why it just kept driving up this road, but the road was washing out worse and worse and worse, and he got past a spot and then tried to back back down and slipped off from it it was a job that i knew that not very many people would be able to execute and we had to do some pretty careful stuff to do it but then but everything just kind of went right like oh, every, everything so that I, I love those kind of jobs yeah one where maybe some people wouldn't even have attempted that one and and we never make fun of anybody we're dealing we're dealing with pretty dangerous stuff like what we're doing yeah. can be very dangerous and we want to I, I know in the videos it kind of looks like I'm a little bit like flippant about safety. I'm really not. I just do it differently than sure than maybe people are used to. I don't spend a lot of time talking about it, but we do it. We it, it is dangerous. Yeah, I mean that's it's one of just towing and recovery in general. I think the drivers don't get a lot of credit. I see them on the sides of roads and storms, oh, yeah. terrible weather. And people are moving over, and it just it, it aggravates yeah. me. And it's like, oh yeah, it, it is putting their life on the line. Really common to get the tow truck drivers to get hit on some level. We've had a mirror wiped off of one of our roll bags. The guy that hit it didn't even know what he hit when he, he was pulled over by the cops a few miles down, and he he busted the mirror off his RV, and he couldn't even tell the cops what he hit. He never saw us. Just like you didn't see the big out. yellow truck with the lights flashing everywhere. Wow, so that's man. wild. Yeah. Well, it's probably also important to mention that you know for folks watching now that may be new to your show uh we're checking you out now that you actually have a lot of towing experience previous to the you just didn't wake up one day and go i'm gonna be a, a, a recovery guy and learn how to use a tow truck <laughs> i mean you you have a lot of experience in this yeah so this kind of stuff interested me but and you're right but also i did wake up one day and said i'm going to be a tow and recovery guy <laughs> I, 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 uh, I sold my roofing company before I knew what I was going to do next. Oh, okay. Interesting. But, so. but, um, I've always gravitated to the, uh, you know, the, the edge of what vehicles can do. Like, so when I was in the, the roofing industry, like e even before I got like as an owner and stuff, um, I was picked to haul the heavy loads and, and the difficult mount, like, okay. This, this cabin is way up in the mountain. The roads might be slick. There's a, only one guy in the company that they would trust to send that up, up there. And so yeah. that would be me. So, so my interest in, in the mechanics, because I, I don't just look at cars and go, oh, that's cool. I'm like, I want to think about like, you know, the, the friction between the tire and the road and the, you know, how the gears are meshing and just all this stuff. And I feel like, and maybe you feel like this too, you're getting feedback from a car that, maybe a normal person doesn't get like when you're thinking about like you're feeling the tires and they're telling yeah. you they're telling you information if you're listening to and that's something that i've always been into so and then just you know we're running uh like the big the forklift great alls and stuff like that in muddy conditions and then of course our friend you know i live in the desert blow sand just exists if you want to go hunting or fishing or hiking you're going to be dealing with this sand so so I did have a lot of experience. So I did just walk right into it. Like, yeah, I'm like, oh, well, I can tell, I can do that. Yeah. And, uh, and then, and as the off road jobs came in, that was more of a, a bigger step to get totally into that because, um, now I'm, I, I not only have to drive where you can't, I have to drag you back out of it. And that right. takes special equipment and special techniques to do that. So, yeah, it's, it's interesting to me that like, Hey, I'm, I'm stuck up here and well, the hills, it's yeah. real bad. 
and then you're knowing, well, I got to drive right where that guy yeah. is stuck or gal or whatever and recover them and also not get stuck myself. Yeah, you know, when that, that ground pressure, that's where that starts yeah. starts uh, adding up and you start figuring out, hey, if I can get rid of five pounds here and 10 pounds there and do that a hundred times, now my rig can drive where you're falling through. So Right. It's interesting you were just talking about, you know, sensing or feeling. It's, it's almost like, um, you know, car guys and gals, as you start adding experience, you almost have this extra sensory kind of thing. Because yeah. you're right, I could be going down a road and, Oh, left front wheel bearing is going out. You just, yep, you just yep. feel it, you hear it, you know, you're, you're kind of one with the vehicle. So that's, that's pretty cool. I've never really talked about that much because I thought maybe I was a little insane. Well, I, yeah, yeah. I, I was going out on a limb there, but, I, but, I, but I've seen you drive and heard you talk and watched your videos. And I'm like, this guy gets cars. Yeah. So. yeah you kind of have to. You drive enough junk and you, you, you start remembering feelings and vibrations and sounds. Right. And so we've done this, and I know you've done this before. I've, I've flown 700 miles away, picked up a car out of a field, sp spent a couple hours getting it going, and then drove it back with a clear conscience all the way back to my house, 700 miles. Yeah. And people are like, that's terrifying. And I'm like, it's not, actually. I, I'm, I'm listening to the car. It's speaking to me, and we're going to make this. Yep, yep. You got a list of things you need. I know it's a priority and you just keep on rolling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, uh, I did power tour one year in a Chevelle, old Chevelle that, um, kind of similar-ish. I bought a Chevelle in a couple states away and I just drove there with an engine in the back of my Suburban and I put <laughs> the engine in the Chevelle and then drove it home. But we took it on power tour and I remember when my wife and kids were with me and I was hearing an inside wheel bearing going out in the front. Uh -huh started turning, verified. Yeah. Well, I was going, why are you swerving all the road? I said, nothing, don't worry about it. Well, then I, I said, give me all the waters and sodas and Gatorades in the car. She's like, okay. So I'm chugging all this, as much liquids as I can. Then I start stopping every four or five exits and I'm peeing on the tire. And she, uh, she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, that's fine. She's like, something's definitely wrong. I'm like, well, <laughs> we're losing our wheel bearings. I'm trying to keep the spindle cool because I don't want to you know, cook it off. Right. We drove like 50 miles that way with me stopping and peeing on the tire <laughs> to get to the motel. So that, so that, parts. yeah, that's a solution I've never had to use, but I'm going to put it, <laughs> I'm going to put it right there. Yeah. Pin that one up. Uh, emergencies <laughs> only. <laughs> All right. So how many, how many projects do you have? You see, you do these builds as well. Do you have a couple always going or do you try to just focus on one? Yeah, they're always going. This one's not done. The five before this aren't done. They're all kind of still in prototype and beta testing. And I know people say projects are never done, but uh, this one's literally not done. <laughs> yeah. So, but but we're using it. We, we always put them to work before they're done. And that's part of the build, right? Like mm -hmm. you're going to, we there's some things we found out i wanted a really elaborate central tire inflation system on this i thought that would be so awesome and useful and then it ended up being this really complex system of solenoids and valves and airlines and then i realized we're not changing air pressure like in my mind i thought we were so we just pulled the whole thing off but so that's part of like getting it out yeah. there in the field and seeing see seeing what, what you need what you need because you can't anticipate every single thing but yeah i've got and we've got we, I've got projects for, I mean, past past my life expectancy. It looks like I'm stressing queue. you out. I can see your blood well, pressure. Well, I'm think, I am. I'm thinking about like because we've got. I mean, we've got I'm the, the same way. I'm we got the off road games coming up, and we've got to get these rigs like up to par for that. And then I just I got a wild hair, and I'm just like, man, I wanna I wanna race Baja. Okay. And so, but I want to do it my way. Mm -hmm. So that's taking a Corvair shell that I've got. Oh, Corvair, of course. And yeah. build this Baja Corvair and put some pretty exotic stuff in it, but Corvair drivetrain and just see, just see. I mean, sure. a win for me would be completing under time. I think if you just roll a Corvair Baja thing off a trailer, show up <laughs> there, you've already won. Yeah. Everyone's gonna be like, what are we looking at? Yeah. That'd be pretty cool. No, I'm the same way, I get that a lot. When are you gonna ever finish a project? Yeah. Well, it's hard to say when a project is done. I'll build it to where I like it. Like that crew cab is not anywhere close to done. Right. But once I started driving it, I was like, there's nothing wrong with it. 
Yeah. I've put thousands of miles on it. I'm like, yeah, well, you know, it's supposed to get body work and paint and all that. It's, it's never going to happen. But it evolves. I went from a 5.3 and all, oh, I don't want a six liter. And we started with the 65, now we have the 80. So it's like, my projects never get finished either. It's, it's just you use them, you change things, you tweak things, you add, you remove. Yeah, it's just the way it goes, you know. I'm not going to think about my list of projects either. <laughs> What's your daily driver? Uh, my daily driver is a 1963 Chevrolet Corvair Monza Spider. <laughs> uh, you kind of like Corvairs. I do kind of like Corvairs. They're fun to drive. You drive one, they're it, fun. Is it... Um... Does it have the original drivetrain, air-cooled and everything? It, yeah, it's air-cooled. Um, I bought it in San Diego. I was We were down there for a job. We did a job down there with actually Donut. And I'm looking at Craigslist, like or not Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace. I love that place. That's my that's my people there. I'm looking at that, and I'm like, hey, there's a Corvair for sale here. I'm going to drive it home. So I bought, bought it and drove it home. Nice. So, so is it safe to say your favorite decade of automobilia is 60s then? Yeah, def definitely 60s and then the early 70s. Uh, as I get older, I'm starting to get nostalgic about things that were stupid when I was a kid. Like, even I, I'll even look at a Ford Pinto now and go, that's kind of a cool car. Man, the Gremlins and Pintos yeah, and stuff right the now. The Pacers. The Pot. Yeah. They're... Yeah, so, so yeah, I... And, and I'm not... I'm not a like Ford Dodge Chevy guy. Like, I'm a I'm more of a, a car guy in general. I don't dive as deep into them as I do in the Corvairs, but if I go to a car show and somebody's put some effort into a vehicle to make it cool and make it theirs, I don't care if it's still got a you know straight six in it or what. It doesn't matter. I I I can get in there and and appreciate what they've got and what right from from an, a historical automotive perspective and from a new owner making it their their yeah. own. The I, vestment side, you can yep, see those, yeah. Yep, I really enjoy that. Yeah, I feel the exact same way, and, and I just like the weird, quirky cars. Right now, I'm on a Studebaker kick, because like yeah. you say, you know, growing up, you're like, oh, Studebaker. Right. Now you look at them, and it's cone front, the yeah. weird feet. It's like, I don't know, I kind of like it, you know? Yeah. And they're still cheap. No one wants to buy them, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I just like the same thing, interesting, different things, and uh, have fun with it, you know? Yeah, for and sure. A lot, a lot. It's nice to see that a lot of these car shows you're starting to see. I think the patina thing is kind of coming down, but people still aren't afraid to drive projects to the. Well, look at us. Right. You've got the, well, it's an awesome truck, but it's not a show truck. You use right. the thing, right? I've got rusted out junk here, and then there's these beautiful cars everywhere else. But yeah. it's like, well, my first time ever going to SEMO was they, the. Harbor Freight brought us in with this. And I remember when I got in here and then I started looking at what else was in there, I'm like, this is an anti sema truck. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it was, uh, it's crazy, this stuff. And I can appreciate that too. Like if, when somebody makes an entire vehicle a piece of jewelry, not really for me, but I can appreciate it. And I'm glad some people do it. Yeah, right? yep, for sure. So. Uh, do you do any, or maybe you don't have time, do you do any sort of wrenching or builds that aren't on YouTube? Do you have any kind of project secrets or anything like that? Or We do most of the, our personal Corvair stuff off camera. Um, I'm, I'm actually thinking about filming a little bit more of that because there's some people seem to be interested in that. Yeah. Um, the, the YouTube and the, the off-road recovery does take an enormous amount of, of my time. But yeah, if we find, you know, my kids have motorcycles and, and you know, four wheelers and all that kind of stuff. So we're always working on something. Always somewhere. something. Yeah. 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 I hear you there. Thank, thanks to ethanol, we are working on carburetors <laughs> more than ever. Yeah. Well, our, uh, thankfully, our local co op has ethanol free fuel pretty cheap. So it's only 87 octane, but that yeah. kind of fix the carburetor and fuel line issue for me for the time being anyway but yeah um what's the worst hack you have that actually works something that maybe you haven't even shown or talked about but or maybe it's just something like i'm gonna try this i don't even know if it's gonna work oh man and maybe it did and you were like wow i can't believe this worked the worst hack or just maybe it's just something there, to there's something trip. there's something that i do that 
seems to be really, really high risk to most people. And that is going way out, way underprepared. And I always just seem to find what I need to do the job. Let me give you, I'll give you two examples of the same thing. Um, I ended up hauling a guy from Southern Utah to Northern Utah. And about when we, we got to like Utah Lake area, Provo area, I remembered I didn't throw the ramps in. This trailer didn't have a place to store them, so I'd throw the ramps in. So I mentioned to him that I didn't, I didn't remember to bring the ramps. And he starts freaking out. And I'm like talking him down. And then after a little while, after he kind of melts out, he's like, you're not even worried, are you? I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> and so, so what we ended up doing is I took the back wheels off the trailer. We backed into a steep parking lot, like driveway, took those two wheels and laid them down. He's in an S10 truck, two wheel drive S10 truck. And he was able to just roll off without any damage, no problem. And that, and you know, that was way more inconvenient than using ramps, but I don't, I never worry about stuff like that. And we did the same thing out uh, when Tom, when Tom Tom came to work for me, one of the first jobs he did was out on the Arizona Strip and we had to load this vehicle on a trailer to get it out. And my rigs don't need ramps. So the same problem happened. We don't have any ramps to load this other truck. Mm. Cause it's, you know, it's a three foot drop off off the end of this yeah. trailer. And the same thing, I'm like, we'll find some place where we can just back in and drive it off. And literally when we got there, the most perfect land formation there to back that trailer. And that's, that's just two examples. That happens to me almost every day. And so <laughs> that's, my, that's my worst habit that ends up being a hack where I'm like, I'll figure it out when I get there. And I'll just think outside the box. Keeps me on my toes, keeps me sharp, makes me look grossly incompetent but on the front. <laughs> You just roll with the punches. Yeah. It can happen. Yeah. That's very cool. Yeah. There, there's been more than one time where we've got somewhere and I'm like, unload the vehicle, every single thing. I want every map pocket, uh, everything under the seat, the trunk, anything, anything that's not bolted down. I want out here, lay it out on the ground. Let's see what our resources are. And that it works. You're like, oh, I, what's this doing here? This will solve our problem. Oh, so anyway. Very cool. What was your first car? Oh, wow, this will surprise you. This one's way out there. Okay. 1962 Chevrolet Corvair. Interesting. Monza oh. 900. Okay. And I drove the wheels off of that car. Literally, one day I lost a rear wheel bearing that had been squawking at me forever. Slid out. Now you lose all the brakes because you got a single piston master cylinder. Death pot. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, but no, I drove that all through high school. I got it. My dad gave it to me when I was 11. Um... We were very, not very well off financially at all, but he had this junk car that didn't run. The engine wasn't in it. He said, he's like, you should, we've got an engine. You can figure it out. And so by the time I was 14, it was running and driving. And that was, uh, got it, got it uh, licensed eventually. We I, don't tell anybody. I drove it a long time unlicensed and unregistered. Allegedly. Allegedly. And then, uh, yeah, that was. Uh, Do you still have it? Um, I don't have that car. Are you looking for it? I, I know it's gone. Oh, I know it got, or... got crushed. So I did, when you're a kid, you don't realize what you're going to think about when you're older. <laughs> right. I know. So that's too bad. It's hard to track cars. But I, got a, anyway. I got a couple of 62s, though, so that's cool. What's your earliest memory of working on a car, then? Is it that Corvair? Yeah, so I, I know way before that. We I uh, I always took interest in it. So my... so. Um, one of my dad's vehicles was a Volkswagen bus with a Corvair drivetrain in it. So he was always working on that and, and keeping it running. So if he was working on it, I was there just absolutely glued. And so I remember one time he took a couple starters apart to make one good starter and mm -hmm. put it back together. And so there's these parts of starters and I just sit out there. I, I, man, six years old, maybe. And I'm not strong enough to stuff the spring back in the solenoid, mm -hmm. but I got the whole thing. It's just a puzzle for me. And I'd put it together and then realize I left parts out. I could do that all day long. So that, so that's my memories is just working on that. Best stuff. way to learn is tear something apart or try to put it back and it's figured out. That's pretty good. Yeah. If you want to have fun, drink every time we say Corvair. <laughs> How many, yeah, how many at your risk. How many more questions do you have that Corvair's the answer? At your I'm own curious. Risk. <laughs> Pet name, Corvair? <laughs> no. Well, I got Peanut, Max, and Lady. Okay. All puppies? 
Yeah, they're yeah, they're all all dogs nobody wanted, and they're just the most amazing dogs. So when you're in the shop, and obviously music's tough, because we can't oh, yeah. do that on YouTube, right? But let's say you're running a time lapse, or no one's in the shop, and you're just cutting a rug in there by yourself, listening to music. What's on the stereo? What's on the stereo? So I'm I'm very picky about my music. Um, but I have a very, very wide range. So I'm going all the way from like 50s and 60s, country and Western, um, all the way up uh, a certain amount of, uh, you know, 70s stuff. I, I pretty much like country music, I can handle up to like the early 90s. When the bro pop started. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's even a little bit beyond that. But yeah, that I can't handle that at all. Um, I, lo I love, I uh, love, like a lot of the old classics, the you know, Patsy Cline, I, I don't know, man. I don't. So fifties to seventies. It's easy. It's it's easier for me to say what I don't listen to. I don't listen to butt rock, nothing but rock. Okay. Hair band stuff. I don't listen to any of that. Um, R and B, jazz. A little bit of R. I do listen to jazz. All right. A little bit, a little bit of earlier earlier R and B. I don't know. I'm I'm. I know a lot of music. I, I, I burst out in the song all the time in real life, not just on YouTube. Um, I've always got something playing on my jukebox. For, yeah. So poor Sandin. Well, my whole team on Roadworthy Rescues. Some days I'll only speak in song lyrics. So yeah. They have oh yeah. No idea what's happening. Or somebody will say something that's like the first part of a song, and you just finish it with the. Yep. Yeah. yeah exactly. They also know that if I put classical piano on. Uh -huh. To just leave me be for a oh, few minutes wow. and just okay. Leave me. So that's you're calming yourself. Oh down. yeah, you're th you're you're uh, what is this? Th soothing? Soothing. Easy for you to say. Yeah. And uh, okay, yeah. that makes sense. Like this, uh, my thumbnail that's falling off. That was uh, classical jazz for about forty-five minutes. After that one, kind of yeah. just, you know, calm yeah. yourself. And then I go right back into Christmas music or. Something. Oh yeah, Christmas something. music. Yeah. You like Jamie will be music? like, it's not Christmas. And I'm like, it is in here right now. <laughs> yeah. Snowing in my mind, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite car movie? Oh, wow. My favorite car movie. So I'm not a big movie guy. Um, car, v car TV shows, We I got a big list of that. It was like Dukes of Hazard, Knight Rider. I mean, the A-Team wasn't so much about it, but I mean, they were wrecking Jeeps and all kinds yeah. of stuff. So, yeah. so, that, so any, of, any of that stuff, and there's a lot of car a car stuff like in that era of my childhood that that really got me going i i mean between the 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 general and the uh kit man that was the two coolest cars on the entire yeah planet. they seemed like unobtainable like man never actually see one in real life you know yeah now like you've seen those i think they call themselves the duke boys they put amd uh charger panels on uh, yeah, Crown Vicks and yep. stuff, and they, they'll they'll jump those for Duke Fest yeah. and stuff. Yeah, they were like, we get, they get death threats and stuff, and like all this hate. Man, they're like, it's Good. not a real charger, right? And people are still like, but you're ruining the panels. They're like, it's new, it's new panels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, I think it's all those fans that watched those shows for years, you know, and then it was revealed that they, I don't know how many hundreds they destroyed on that show. Right. But, well, and that and the. Usually when the movies come out for some car themed TV show, it's later and they, they just somehow didn't catch the soul of the vehicle for me. So did you ever want to build a car off of like a movie or a TV show? Like, did you ever go like, I'm going to make something like that or why? Um, I, I like to take elements of them. I've thought about, but see where my, when my heart's in the Corvairs, I'm like, like, like the Morver, the off-road rig that I've got, it's got a scanner bar on it. So, oh, so you integrate other little pieces. Yeah. yeah. When is the 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 core jet gonna happen? The Corvair jet boat. Oh, I don't know. I'm not much of a boat guy. But you almost have to do it because you almost. have every other Corvair application possible, except for aircraft. They use them in airplanes. Have you seen that? Well, here you go. Cor the engine and an yeah. airplane. I don't want to be in that one. <laughs> Every once in a while, the crank breaks and the propeller falls off. Yeah, that's fine. You don't always need those. <laughs> uh, speaking of things falling off, have you ever had the wheels fall off a project? Maybe literally, but like you just, you have something. I know it's happened to me where you, you walk in, flip the lights on, and you're like, I just, this needs to be done. I can't. 
but you're like, you're done. You don't even want oh, to yeah, touch that, it. Oh, yeah, that happens a lot because it, it's hard for me to to keep totally interested in a certain project. It would be nice to put them on the back burner for a while till it, till it like starts keeping me up at night again. I'm like, okay, I want to get back on yeah. that. Um, there's, there is definitely days where I'm just not interested in working on the project and I have to, <laughs> cause I got to put a video out. If you're so. hearing the guy that carries a snow shovel and home alone and or a steam engine, that's furniture being drug on concrete for some reason. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, I think just like everybody, I, I, I'll have those days where I'm just not motivated. Um, fortunately, I think I might be a little bit higher on average than a regular person for staying motivated on a job. I, I do have a tendency to hyper fixate on things and be able to just stay, you know, stick with them till the So we're opposites. Cause I just pretend I don't see anything. Yeah. Like I'm getting through a project. I'm like, I know that master cylinder is bad, but we're just going to pretend it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's okay. Or I don't see that leak or I don't see, I'll just hit it with some spray paint or yeah. But that probably drive you nuts, and you got to go. Yeah, I'm a, a little bit, and it, and it's weird. Everybody has their. Everybody's like, it's kind of cool to say my OCD won't let me do this. No, that's, you're just a normal person in some things. But yeah. sometimes something will get in my head, and I'm like, I have to fix this right now. Like that happens. The um, it's happening less and less, but it used to be like, it's whatever midnight. I've been in bed for a minute, and then I just get up, and Jamie's like, Where are you going? I'm like, I'm going out to the shop. Gotta figure this I gotta out. figure this problem out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are times that those will tr keep me awake for sure. But I'm, it, a lot of the stuff that I do, thankfully, is just like, what is the bare necessities and the least amount of money we could put into something to? Well, and I, I'm in a fairly unique position too, where this thing has to be ready to go all the time too. So, right, if something's wrong. And I'm, I, we got to fix it because we can have a call where this is the only thing that'll do it. Right. So you got to keep up on your maintenance. You yes. Do all right. that stuff. Yep. Yeah. So we'll make, we'll make like, we'll, and kind of like this, like, oh, we need to fix whatever the shift linkage is, it needs to be adjusted or fixed, but I've got to pull the cab to do that. So let's, let's order these other parts. We know that we need to replace when we're in there. I want to try a different transfer case. And so then we'll do it all at once. So I'll have um, to kind of ignore it for a minute. <laughs> I, uh, I have a running list on the insides of my windshields of, so oh yeah, that needs to be fixed. And I usually just wait until it gets so sun faded, they wear away. Uh -huh. And then I feel like problem solved. I'm accomplishing things that the list <laughs> is going down somehow. <laughs> Very cool. Uh, so what can your fans expect coming big? You got, uh, you've got the off-road games, but so beyond that, are there any big projects you want to kind of reveal or do they already know them or do you have any thoughts about, well, I, we're in a new year, so. Yeah, I'd, I'd really like to start a second channel that's kind of like. Corvair-based? Not necessarily Corvair-based, but somewhere that I could put Corvair content on. So yeah. kind of like on-road adventure stuff instead of like the off-road recovery. So, um, that's something I, I, I'm, I've been working on it for a couple of years, just idea. thinking and trying to figure out how yeah. to do it. And then uh, we've just got builds coming up. We've got our snow cats going to be done. I've got a, my audience wants me to build, like they always talk about a ro off-road rollback. And that's a dichotomy because rollbacks carry their weight so high, which is the opposite of what you want off-road. So it would be really wide. And yeah, limits it's going to be as low as possible. And so, I want to build one and I don't like building things that don't work. So I'm not, it's not like, Hey, I'm going to show you why this doesn't work. I want to try to figure out if I can make it at least work within a narrow band. Hmm. So it'll, it'll be, it'll be something. Oh, well, there you go. You could maybe look forward to seeing something like that. Six That's by six cool. off-road rollback that I was, won't, won't be able to do the off camber stuff, but it should be able to do the dunes and stuff like that. Yeah. There you go. And maybe some mud, muddy stuff and some light drip. We don't have stuff. mud. You don't have mud at all? No, not very often. Well, it doesn't rain, I suppose. Yeah, we're, we're in the Mojave Desert. Yeah. No, there is mud there, but it's not, it's different than, than like back east mud. We don't, it's pretty, pretty much dry all the time. Very awesome. Well, I think we're fixing to get kicked out of here by the stack of tables and chairs no. behind us. So I think we're going to call it good. Thanks for taking the time. I know you're super busy here. We got a bunch of stuff going on today. 
It's been nice to meet you in person. Yeah, it's fun. Chad, Good to finally meet. And have some fun. I want to look at this thing closer when we wrap up. So big thanks to Matt. Make sure to check out Matt's Off-Road Recovery on YouTube. You got all the social media stuff as well. Yeah, Facebook, Instagram. I think we even got TikTok. I don't know. Yeah, there you go. Google Web it. I'm not sure. <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you soon.